in a litter of newborns. There's a special one. It has a cross mark on its body. It's Q. Q has four brothers and sisters, a bunch of puppies that cause havoc in the house every day. The owner called and wanted to send them to be guide dogs. But the director said guide dogs are all about pedigree. Domesticated dogs don't qualify. But after the owner begged and pleaded, the director had no choice but to say yes, but you can only choose one. You call out to the puppies to come here. If one of them doesn't get restless or noisy, run straight to me. Then he passes the test. The owner started the experiment. The puppies immediately pounce on the master. They gathered around their master, but only Q was different. He waited a little while before trotting over to his master. He looked into his master's eyes, as if asking what's going on. Apparently, only Q was up to the task. And so Q left his mother's arms. He was sent to a guide dog training center. When he arrived at the training base, at the beginning, Q was not doing well. He couldn't resist the temptation of food, couldn't understand the instructions, couldn't recognize the obstacles. The second stage is outdoor training. Facing a complex environment, he has to be the first to recognize obstacles. He has to be the first to recognize obstacles and lead his master safely through them. Encouraged by the dog trainer, Q learns very seriously. Soon he'll be able to lead people safely on the road. Now we need to find him a suitable owner. It's this strange blind man, but they had a lot of problems at first. He can't adopt Q yet, because he needs a month of training and bonding first. He won't listen to Q's directions to cross the street. Q stopped at the curb. But the man insisted on walking and almost hit a big truck. There's a roadblock ahead. Q stopped in front of the man, but he insisted on crashing into it. That day, the man took Q on the road with confidence. He was walking in the middle of the road. Q tried to pull him to the side of the road. He stubbornly pulled the dog back to the center of the road. And so they caused a big traffic jam. The coach was informed. He scolded the man for being irresponsible. He said you must be supervised during training, otherwise you may die. Q will also die. The man lowered his head in shame. From then on, he let go of his arrogance. He began to listen to Q's instructions. Soon they graduated. The man brought Q home. He built a puppy house for him. He was proud to show off to his son. The dog is much more obedient than you are. The next day, the man took Q to work and started to show it off to his co-workers. The co-workers all loved Q. They petted and rubbed against him, surrounded by so many people. Q was very calm. He kept his eyes on his master, waiting for orders. One day at work, the man suddenly felt unwell. He groped his way to the bathroom, without calling little Q. But little Q still sensed the abnormality, and followed him all the way. Seeing his master in pain, little Q was extremely anxious. Later, the man was hospitalized. And little Q silently stayed by his side. Until this day, the dog trainer came to the hospital to take little Q back because the man had someone to take care of him and no longer needed a guide dog. The boy didn't want his father to be sad, so he quietly took little Q away. Unexpectedly, the man on the hospital bed raised his hand, as if bidding farewell. It turned out that he could always hear, but he couldn't bear the parting. Little Q was taken back to the base and became a demonstration dog. He stayed there for three years. The man repeatedly got hospitalized and discharged. And little Q waited for him for three years. Until this day, he heard the familiar sound of a blind stick. He excitedly rushed out and saw his master indeed. Little Q thought his master came to pick him up and take him home. But the man only led him for 30 meters. Those 30 meters were the last journey little Q took with his master. Later, the master passed away. At the funeral, Little Q kept looking at his master. This was the third time he had to part with someone. Seven years later, 11-year-old Little Q returned to his adoptive parents' home. Everything here was so familiar. Little Q spent a year of carefree days here. After a year, Little Q was playing in the yard. When he got tired and wanted to go back to his room, he slipped and fell as he didn't stand steadily. He had been reminding people to watch out for steps throughout his life but he fell in front of the steps. Little Q held on for two days. That night, the adoptive parents suddenly heard Little Q's rapid breathing. They smiled, while tears streamed down their faces, gently telling Little Q, thank you, sleep well.